Hi everyone, I'm back this week to continue our conversation about color and talk a little bit about artist Alma Woodsy Thomas and also how her work relates to mosaics. So I brought a slideshow to explain it to you. This is a painting done by Alma Woodsy Thomas in 1966. It's called Air View of a Spring Nursery. And she was very inspired by flowers and nature. And she said that she could hear the wind playing music in the trees. And that made her want to paint some of these things. So she used a paintbrush and just dabbed colors. And these are all sort of the primary and secondary colors that we looked at, tertiary colors. You can see that color is really important to her. And also graphic shapes and lines. Emma Wizzy Thomas was born in Georgia in 1891. And as a child, they moved to Washington, D.C. to get away from the racial tensions of the South and pursue better opportunities available in Washington. So she grew up, went to college, and became an art teacher. And she taught for 35 years in the Washington, D.C. public schools. This is a painting she did after she retired. She did most of her work that we see now after she retired. But this one actually hangs in the White House. Michelle Obama bought this to put it in the dining room in the White House. And here you can see it there. That's a pretty big deal. She was also inspired by space and space exploration and the vastness of the universe. This one is called Blast Off. It kind of reminds you of a rocket taking off and she's used these colors that remind you of heat and fire, right? The reds and the oranges and the yellows, but also the blues of the sky and space. And she makes all these pictures just with these repeated rectangular sort of dab marks from the paintbrush. This one is called Mars dust. So Mars is red planet, right? And this is just the dust. It's all, it's the whole painting. This one is Starry Night and the Astronauts. And you can see most of the painting is just varying shades of blue, but then there's this little dot of sort of rocket fire or something up in the top corner there. And it really makes you think of the astronauts and going off into space. She also had a sense of humor. This one is called Snoopy Sees Earth Wrapped in a Sunset. And she did a whole series of paintings from Snoopy's point of view, which is kind of funny. Alma Woodsy Thomas was the first African-American woman to be given a show at the Whitney Art Museum in New York City. So it's a big deal art museum. And she was the first one. This, this was huge for African-American artists and especially women artists. So this one is another one inspired by space, the Apollo 12 splashdown. The Apollo 12 went to the moon and then came back and splashed down into the ocean. So you can get the feeling of that from this. Her work is commonly compared to mosaics or it brings mosaics to mind. Now mosaics are pieces made up of little tiles or glass where patterns or pictures are created. And this is mosaics by Antoni Gaudi, who was a Catalan Spanish artist. He died almost a hundred years ago but he decorated all kinds of things throughout the city of Barcelona with mosaic. And you can see the details in the buildings behind here. This is mosaic that was in the Park Ghoul in Barcelona, or it's still there. And you can see just all the different little shapes. And these are not regular shapes. He's got triangles and circles and rectangles, all kinds of shapes, where Alma Woodsy Thomas sort of stuck to the regular rectangles and squares. He's, he's all over the place. And that's okay too, that's great. And here's the lizard at the park pool. He's, he's a pretty big lizard and he's all covered in mosaic. He's pretty neat looking, sort of a symbol of the city. This is one of the buildings that Gaudi did in Barcelona. He is a famous art architect, so he did tons of buildings, but you can see the facade of this building, the front of it is all covered in mosaic. And here's a detail of the roof here. So mosaic can be used in many different ways on many different things. 
the, the gradient of the color here is really nice too, how it's gone browns, oranges, yellows, all the way to whites. And this is Jim Batcher. He's a mosaic artist working now in Chicago. And he does these mosaics in potholes in the city streets. This one is the Holy Trinity that he did during pandemic times in 2020 of very important things, toilet paper, hand sanitizer. He also did some fun ones here on the left, the Crunch Bar is part of a series called Pretty Trashed. And Treats in the Streets was all ice creams and popsicles and ice cream sandwiches in the streets. And sometimes these stick around, sometimes they disappear. You know, the streets get repaved or who knows where they go. But it's a little piece of fun when you're walking around. So I have a little video of an interview with the artist that I'll think you'll like. Most of us try to avoid potholes on the road, but not all of us. Here's Lee Cowan. In his vintage Ford pickup, Jim Bakker is on the prowl, looking to find what most drivers hope to avoid. There's a trio right behind me that looked perfect. Perfect potholes? Preposterous. These are ideal. Becker may be the only person behind a steering wheel who sees car-eating craters as potential canvases. I'm completely subservient to the pothole gods. Whatever is served out to me, I've got to deal with. He's a true street artist in every sense of the word. Since 2013, on city streets in Chicago and elsewhere, he's been filling potholes with mosaics like these depicting everything from popsicles to pop stars. You ever feel a little vulnerable out here? Yes, 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 I do. We first met Backer, naturally playing in the middle of the street, four years ago. There's a hazard. Yeah. <laughs> so since the last time we talked, how much has your visibility gone up? Oh, God, huge, huge. He's filled nearly 90 potholes with his work so far, one tiny piece of marble and glass at a time. But the streets, are quieter now than they used to be, and are empty of laughter, too. Which is where his latest works come in. So I'm working on the uh, perpetual toilet paper piece right now. You heard right, the perpetual toilet paper mosaic. It became so popular, he's now put it on iPhone cases and made puzzles, even fine prints. Somebody put it this way, which I thought was kind of an interesting way, but they wanted a, a souvenir. Of, of these times to look back on. It doesn't matter who you are, everyone can relate to toilet paper. Just like everybody can relate to hand sanitizer. Meet the Purell pothole. You're not trying to make fun of it though. Oh God, no. It's really trying to, 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 to pull out the positive out of a negative. To do it, he is quite literally paving the streets with gold. That. Gold leaf, that is. Each work gets a halo. The full saintly treatment for products that after all, are a holy miracle these days to find. It says so much, even though it's so simple. It uh, totally. That's what makes it so fun and unique. You know, it's like it's it's so specific to these times. Times we all hope will be temporary, just like his work. Even in the best of cases, pieces of pottle art probably last about at best four or five years, and then streets just get repaved. With luck, the virus will be paved over too with a vaccine or at least some kind of treatment. In the meantime, Jim Bakker will stay on his knees out in traffic, trying to make our lives a little less bumpy. How long do you think you'll keep doing this? I'm gonna do it till the day I die, until I can't. I wouldn't say it's a good way to make a living, but it's a great career. You know, when you love what you do and a lot of people like what you do, how could you not continue to do that as long as possible as, a, as, a, as an artist? So we looked at Alma Woodsy Thomas and her paintings, and then we looked at some mosaic artists, Jim Bakker and Anthony Gowdy, and looked at how they relate, even though they're totally different medias. So what I want you to do this week is make your own cardboard mosaic. So I collected some cardboards from things I had in my recycling, and mostly I collected these because of the color. I like the colors. And I'm going to make a mosaic out of these. The first step is to 
cut them up into little shapes. I did squares and rectangles. You saw Gaudi did all kinds of shapes. Docker combined the rectangles and triangles and everything, so it's, it's up to you. And we're going to make a mosaic out of all these. You can make something like a picture of a real thing. You could make a pattern. You could make something inspired by something. Entirely up to you. So I started working on an example. And this is purely an abstract pattern. I'm just picking the colors that I want to work with, thinking about which colors I want next to each other and which directions I want to go in. And I'm going from there. But you can do whatever you would like. So you need a piece of paper, glue, scissors, some thin cardboard to work with. Now, if you can't find any thin cardboard, that's fine. Get some colored paper or get some white paper, color it, then cut it up and work with it from there. So here's how mine ended up. Remember, you can use any parts of the boxes. You can use the parts with words or pictures or not. I just used the plain colors, but it's entirely up to you. So I can't wait to see what you make.